I wanted to ask uh, Chisom. I mean, you started off, you know, um, as an ask her from studying, the studying an, as, as an agent. Yeah. <laughs> you know, is that something you? No, you need to put you need to put it in perspective. This is the very first woman FIFA agent. I was just going to get there because whose idea was that to? Because you said, so I think I read somewhere that you wanted to get noticed. Yeah, you never really it. were interested in that, selling or moving that players. That was it. That was it. I was, I was fresh out of school, very close friends with uh, Austin Akosa's son. Mm. Went to school together. So I was uh, this girl in school in the uh, University of Abuja. I was famous, not because of uh, I was yeah. watching football. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, wanted so to get I that was one. the <laughs> only girl. I'm not kidding. Euro uh, 2000. Trinidad and Tobago, 1999, I think it was. I'm not kidding, guys. In Guagualada, where we used to go and watch uh, football, we used to go to this hotel. Yeah, this hotel. I was the only girl. So by the, sec by the third day, every time I arrived, there would be two empty chairs yeah. in front with about 200 guys. Two empty chairs. For, for you? Yeah, one for me, and then the second one was just in case I was able to convince my friends. Know, girl. <laughs> Half of the time they said no, but once in a while they'd grudgingly, they all still hate football to today. So I go there, I wouldn't buy a pin. Yeah. I, I'm, I don't drink alcohol, I wish I did because I would have scattered my head yeah. there. Everything was done there, okay? And then when, when I finished, I knew for a fact that I wanted to work in the sports industry. As what? I did know. not know. Okay. But I knew for a fact that I wanted to be in the sports industry. So when I came out, started the mobile phone business with my brother. At that time, money did that thing, I can't lie. So I was touching money. So I was just like 22 and touching money because my brother was in England. He'd send it. I had, we had an office in Lagos. I was running the one in Abuja. I had all that money. But I still said, I'm not a trader. I want to do sports. So I called uh, Akosa. I always like to have someone with me. I said, Annie, your dad is in NFF. Let's go and do the sports thing. And he said, that's what now? I said, I don't know. So every day in my office, I'd be on the internet. That time, the internet was dialing, horrible. Yeah. I'd be there, searching and searching and searching. One day, I was, I know it was on, I was uh, on FIFA website almost every day. So one day I saw football, agent. FIFA licensed agent. I'm like, hey, what's this? So I go there, saw Nigeria, check, 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 check. They were like uh, 20 something or 30 something at the time. No woman. I said to Annie, I think this There's is our way in. Mm. He said, how? I said, yeah, this is our way in. I'm there. No woman has, no woman is here. I think we should go get a license. And he was like, ah, OK. And I'm, and that time, you know, as a young girl, you know, uh, at, at 20, I'll finish school. 22, I'll have my first child. 23, yeah, I'll have my second <laughs> child. By 35, I'll grow up. At 40, I'll retire. And then at 40, I'll have I'll worked there. Uh, uh, so we had that. I said, honey, man. Oh, Didn't we all? <laughs> and I said to Annie, look at these, uh, this, these guys. We can make 20,000 pounds. Hey, I have one car like this. <laughs> <laughs> 30,000 pounds, 50,000. That was Annie was saying, but me, I'm like, let's go and do it. So we went there, and then I did all the research. Annie wasn't interested. I did all the research, everything. I, I brought out uh, uh, past questions from the FIFA website. We studied. We're fresh out of school, by the way. Two years so out of the school. Mind still, still, the mind is still, still fresh. Things, yeah, yes. so we did that. They said that we had to pay uh, 275000 at the time for registration no and uh, for registration licensing. and licensing. Ah, I said, Annie, this uh, my brother's business here. We borrowed the money and we pay back later. And then we decided to do that. Got there. I saw Fanny Amu. He was the acting general secretary. I went to him. And he said, come. Then, then I was dead skinny, mm. very tiny girl. And I went to him. He said, I said, I came here to write this. He said, you. He started laughing. You know, funny and he's mm. And he says, so what do you want from me? I said, all I want is, again, fresh out of school, is that when I write my exam, just make sure you don't fail me when I have passed. Again, the rot in the country. Because when you write in school, and then you have to negotiate your past. All I just want is give me a, a, a fair, a fair a chance. Fair, yeah. And then he said, okay, went in there, and I was the first woman, okay, OB, who's still there now, was the coordinator. And then he said, uh, the first woman to ever attempt this exam. There were about 19 of us, and then he said, the men should stand up and applaud. I said, finally, step one I mean, to get in I mean, noticed. I have a foot in the door. Yeah, first step one, we went in there. And then there was my first boss I ever had after when I decided to go to leave trading. Uh, he was there as well from Kano. He's Sudanese, born in Nigeria. He's, he said his grandfather came to Nigeria in 1923, but he's Sudanese. 
So the guy was a very wealthy man. He took an interest in Anya and I. So I was, I was about 2005, I was about 24. Annie was a year younger. The, young, the other youngest person there would have been like maybe 45. Yeah. Right. So we're, we're very young. And then this man then said, you know what? The fact that two of, the two of you came here at this age, it means that there's something. So he took us under his wings. Now, I have done, even till today, I try to do a few deals with the player. In fact, I almost hammered one hammer. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. You guys don't go talk after this one. You know, that, that almost, almost You know, the, almost, almost, you know almost, the line almost. passing all of this, yeah. Yeah. everything you do variously, it's passion. Yeah. yeah. Passion, yeah. that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. It's, it's because we haven't made millions. Mm, yeah. It's passion. And he has left because, again, it wasn't no his passion. passion. Yeah. Yeah. It was no, mine. just the one driving it. It was yeah. mine. Yeah. But he played his role. Timothy is always complaining about no money, no money, but he wouldn't leave. Yeah. yeah. Don't we all? No money, no money, no money, but I know what he just did. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. We'll talk after so that. So that's okay. <laughs> so that's okay. Again, again. Changing cars <laughs> and... That's what I always say to the young people, okay? It's a journey. You have to find, for me, again, is, this is very important because it works yeah. for me. It's a process. You have to find a way to be different. Find a niche. Yeah. Yes. For, for people like me, we already have that advantage. And I don't take it for granted. Yes. I'm a woman. Yes. So and yeah. I, in we don't have world. a lot yes. of us. Yes. yes. Right. So I always, always say yes. So you were the first in there, yeah. basically. And in the world now that is gender the there are certain that, things that will happen. Yes. I won't say I, simply because I, you're a woman, because I, you have to put yourself no, there. I interviewed Chisholm and some ladies on a podcast yeah. about three, four months ago, and I accused them. All this is gender, gender, women, women, women. You're not giving the men anything. <laughs> <laughs> see, but you saw, you see what you said. They're not portraying in America see, women. They no, they're they're women. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you see what you stated now, Chisholm, the fact that be, be different. I think yeah. that's very, very key. Yeah. But but you should, you should, I think that's not that. where you should start from. Before you became different, there was passion. passion. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm. I, what I feel strongly now, and we're talking about young people before we got on, on, on the table. Mm. Young people right now, want to make money. Yes. That's money their, is the drive, is everything. Drive, yes. So when they come, they say, I want to learn under you. What they're saying is, I want you I to want be paying me. Mm. Or, I want you to just... pay me what I expect you to you pay, pay me. Or, I want to learn under you. It simply means... Now, let me, let me, tell, let me tell you guys a, a quick story. There's let me no tell passion. you guys a quick story. So I have this friend of mine who's uh, doing very well in, in the media space. She's not a sports person. in Broadcast television. I'm not going to mention names. So she got this very, very brilliant presenter. A female presenter, very brilliant. I think she's one of the most talented we have in Nigeria, okay? And then gave her a gig. I think it was during the World Cup. Gave her a gig. And then according to this friend of mine, she said, this girl had done the first show, second show. She also saw the girl. Uh, she had the girl put up uh, some Something videos on on, online media. on her social media platform. And she saw it and she, she was like, okay, this is somebody we can groom. Mm. She said the girl had done three or four shows, and each time, this friend of mine would go to her to encourage her. I was yeah. like, okay, you've, you've done a, you did a good job, well done, blah, blah, blah. You can get better here. Can get better, yeah. Fourth time, this girl then uh, came to her and said, okay, uh, I've, I think I've done a very good job so far, so I need my makeup artist now. I need a uh, 200% uh, increase. I need a uh, wardrobe. I need this and I need that. And she said to me, Four shows. <laughs> Four shows in. Four shows. She tried to. So, <laughs> some will come at you. Four shows. Yeah. And she said, other people have been here 10 years, 12 years, still trying Slug to it. go. Slug no, because it down. she has a wrong conception. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah. She and that's wrong, how she lost it. She, she thinks, because I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm here. No, she thinks yeah. once I'm in the door, I make it. Yeah. I don't think that's where yeah. it started, DJ. Mm. Yeah. We were talking about it. There is a prevailing sense of entitlement in thing. today's young in people. In today's young thing, people, yeah. There's, there's a wrong so, you see, for instance, for instance, I remember what Jimmy Odimo said that to me when he said, because I, I started broadcasting, not with sports, yeah. but with general beats general, and politics, yeah. Yeah. then aviation and, and crime. So when he brought me back from Abuja, we were just about to start a program. We were about to start a belt on LTV called um, Edition 12. So the sports program was called WWW WWE Sports. Yeah, I used to watch it. Yeah. yeah so Wallace Scott. Wallace Scott was much later. Yeah. He used to be this guy Elijah Debo Ali was a was was a sports was in sports desk. When I come back from Abuja, so the show starts say on a Monday. Yeah. So I'm just getting into Lagos and I'm watching the very first show on Monday. 
and Elijah Debohari bombed because it was a ministry <laughs> worker in the LTV. He bombed. So Jimmy Dumos runs downstairs and he's eating him out. Angry, yeah. Really angry. This is not what I expect. Just look at me. Jimmy Zan can do it. I said, sports? He said, go do it. Don't you, don't you like a lot of sports? Don't you play sports? Go do it. So the next day, I'm doing sports. Yeah. And he's watching from upstairs. Comes out here. That's what I'm telling you about. Now, do this. Be more expressive. Do so he told me then. And, and till tomorrow, that's what I did. He said, now, he said, with sports, and a lot of young people need to know this, that with sports, the people who do it best are the Americans. Yeah. If you want to be a sports broadcaster, not the sports reporter, sports broadcaster, watch the Americans. Is it because sports is about stats. So he said to me, watch a lot of ESPN. And did I watch a lot of ESPN? My word. I watch everything you could think of on ESPN. And then, then I'll go watch Super Sports. So I was watching um, Thomas Lambo, yeah. and, and and I was just Mara. looking. Now Mara was much later. Later. Yeah. It was Thomas, and I was watching to see different styles. Mm. So you get this person's style, you get this person's yeah. style. In maybe on today's show, you try and incorporate this person's style. Yeah. You see how it fits. Yeah. It doesn't really fit. Mm. Tomorrow I look what's the Jomoto Ibo. Yeah. Let me see if I can take his style. Fit, fit. I did Eventually that too. you find yourself. Yeah. Eventually you, know, you, you get your yourself. style. Yeah. I did and that. And that's what I did, you know. You know? Go, go, today's young people do not even I don't think they watch people. Goes back to no, when or when listen to people. When, yeah, yeah, that's let, the problem. Let me tell you a little story as well. When um I decided to go into sports, I used to watch what was on offer. Then, which was basically, with all due respect, NTA, not trying to be, really? it was basically NTA. NTA, yeah. And I felt it could be done better. Of course. So, but the first thing I did was I went to school for 18 months to get basic training in, 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 in broadcasting. Journalism and broadcasting, in broadcasting. Yes. So, when I was lucky, you know, they say preparation makes opportunity. I finished, and I was Rotorac president when I was final year in UI. The person that was general manager of DBN Sports happened to be a retroact president when he was in University of Illinois. We had met. So I just went to him. I got that gig. Now, my position was the weakest part of our sports was analysis. We never used to do a lot of analysis. So when I got my gig at DBN, what I did was I had an analyst for every sport. For tennis, somebody who was well versed in tennis. That's when I met Buddy, yeah. was writing a basketball. That's because that's and then women's football. What oh, year was this? This was 94, no, 94, 95. Yeah. And I also decided that I didn't want all the regular analysts that were on, 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 on already on yeah. air. Yeah. And right. then Digital was in England, it came back, and I had him for European football, and people like Shola and Fela and all that. I felt people who had, and you know, I think what that did, without with, with a sense of humility, saying it was like, a lot of young people have told me they saw us as, because sports was not an industry. You can't go to your parents and say, I want to do sports. Yeah. But what that did was, people were like, are these regular guys? Yeah, I mean, this one I said he wanted to do sports. His dad was like, so he's like, he's watching and he said, these regular guys are doing sports for a living. Yeah. So it led to a lot of young people feeling, okay, this is something that I could do yeah. for a living. I'm, I'm um, Viola alluded to a point. You have to, you have to build your industry to earn respect. Nobody's yeah. going to hand it to Nobody's you. Nobody's going to do yeah. that. Nobody's yeah. going to hand you the respect. So it's like now we build it to the point where kids can go to their parents and say, I want to be a sportscaster. Yes. And it doesn't sound crazy. It doesn't. Mm. It doesn't sound like, are you OK? Our parents I, hustling me to put yes. their children on my program. Exactly. Yeah. As pundits. Exactly. As, yeah. as, as pundits. People were calling me to say, can you take my son under your wing? Can you, you know, can you mentor him and all that? You know, because at the end of the day, we've done some very good things. Yeah. Some things are not going very well. But we, we shouldn't focus on that. We should just continue to up the ante. Continue to do things yeah. at a certain level. Yeah. And then everything will have to, we have to drag everybody with us. Because we know that they are not going to do it anyhow. So let's not forget to monetize it. Yeah. yeah. So let's that, not that, that, the business. Quickly, quick, let me round up. When we now wanted to be doing content, I told them, look, I'm not a very good marketer. I told you, Jam, but I'm not a very good marketer, but I have ability to create quality content. What we need to do is we need to package and present that content that even without marketing, 
I'm saying this with all sense of humility. There's hardly any sponsorship we have had as a company that we marketed. It was, we put it out there, and the sponsor will come. come. But we paid, paid. The graphics we used to use for 90 minutes on AIT, some people are still using those graphics today. 90 minutes started in 1999. Mm -hmm. That's 21 years ago. That's how far we went Ahead. to go and do. Top well, so you have to, don't just do the norm, like everybody, yeah. go the extra mile. Yeah. Yeah. And what happened after two, the, our radio show, after two, three weeks, I'm not saying this to praise, you know, I'm just saying it to, Nothing wrong to praise it. Yeah. Hey, put your after own, two man. weeks, put somebody came. 90 minutes, after a couple of weeks, somebody came. It's not that easy all the time. Yeah. But you have to do things at a certain level where you know that people will see it and want to be associated with it. Right. You know, don't just do the norm or the basic yeah, stuff, and yeah. think, hey, I'm doing something to... Just, just how, do you get, how do you get over um, self-doubt and perfectionism? How do you get over your artistic frustrations when you miss a line on air? And how oh, do you recover wow. from that? Oh, wow. I think, for me, again, thank God for live TV. Because mm. live TV does not give you that luxury. Yep. You, you have, to to you have to move on. Going. Or you make more mistakes. Or you make more mistakes. <laughs> and I think as, as when I started, I started off as, as, a present, as an analyst, analyst. And I did that for three years. So when I got pushed to the Spanish La Liga, I can never forget my first day. First of all, my voice went up like 10 octaves. <laughs> high pitched. I was this I was I was scared. I kept stuttering and, and stuff like that. And I didn't forget that for the next week. So as, the day, as each day passed, I got more nervous. I didn't want that Friday to come. And then I said to Felix, I think I'll go back to my being boss, an Felix, analyst. being an analyst. He said, no, you have to come back next yeah. Friday. Next Friday, I went. I was worse that Friday than I was the week before. So that's why I said to you, it, it's not easy to realize that it's easy. So again, you get nervous. But like I said, number one, you have to be your own biggest critic because nobody, you know when you've made a mistake. Yes. No, nobody here can say they don't know. You know when you've stuttered. The next person might think it's, might not even notice yeah. it, but yeah. you know. So it's not something you can ever completely get over. Yeah. And you shouldn't even try You shouldn't try to. Just be better than yours. Just be you better. Knew last time, so what I have be learned over the years is to not let my mistakes stick in my head. Yep. Because when it does, that's when you keep making mistakes. Yeah. So I've made the mistake. I remember one time I said, uh, what's this uh, former man you goalkeeper? Michael? No, I Spencer. called I called him Toshak, but his name was uh, Thomas Thomas, Thomas. Kushak. 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 Yeah. So on air I said Thomas Toshak, Toshak. which goes to John Toshak. <laughs> so you mix the names up. I mix the names up. The abuse I got on Twitter that day because <laughs> yeah. you will do one a one hour show, a five hour show. Everything is perfect. That yeah, one that mistake. One, that that, one mistake. that yeah. ten seconds. Yes. I can never forget it. So but now and then again I had to stop trying to figure out if people noticed my mistakes. Mm. It is my mistakes. Yeah. It's nobody's business. And I know I made it. Yeah. yeah, I made it. And I think you don't know, actually. Yeah. Uh, but, if but I, you know. No, I think they just try to prove to you that they that know they better know than you. Better. Yeah. 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 Okay. You made a mistake, you know? Yeah. So I, I think said, it gives them... And it's, it's, it's all lighter. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. 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 And also learn to, to laugh at yourself. Yes. Oh, yeah. Even when I realized that Toshak thing, I laughed. When I saw it, and I kept laughing, I said, what the hell is Tosha? Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah. But, no, you, I but you know that time you say you, you want to say something and something else pops That's up. That's what I'm saying. Of course. That's what I'm saying. Tosha Tosha is, is an explanation. Of course. Of course. Hmm? No, no, it has to be human. You must understand that you it. your just mind works uh, faster than your, mm. your mouth. Yeah. 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 Let me tell you as well is that when you're on air, we're on air particularly for live shows. Sorry to to you know to button. Particularly on live shows. And this is what I say to you. It's so mentally draining yes. because you are completely in the moment. Yeah. You are talking to millions of Nigerians yeah. at the same time. Nice. So, the, let, so me, let, me, a... let me help you put it in perspective. <laughs> On live show, yeah. okay, you are talking to your analyst. You are talking to millions of people out there. Your there are cameramen there. You. Then you have your director yeah. talking in to your you. Head. Yeah. He's not just talking to you. He's talking to other people. He's talking. The producer is talking, talking to you. He's Somebody's talking making to a new he's joke. Talking to he's talking to the cameraman. Somebody's making he's a new to joke. The audio guy. Everybody. He's talking they're to the floor manager. Jokes. He's talking to the to the graphics guy. He's jokes. talking to the guys in South Africa. You know, and all that, getting everything together, and all the things he's saying to all the people. It's all you are here. And everything. you have to face the camera let and me, keep your thoughts. Let me let me on a lighter note. We had ex internationals come through. The very first one. And uh, let's say it is okay. Uh, Taribo West. So we were live on air, and Taribo was not seated <laughs> properly. So he said, ah, uh, Pastor Taribo, 
Uh, you need to sit properly. He said, okay. <laughs> no, 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 don't say okay on air. <laughs> and I said, okay, okay. <laughs> because let, your, let your microphone will not be muted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something else I need uh, people who do this to, to remember. So the other day I was sending a text, uh, or rather somebody put something on, on uh, a social WhatsApp group, and then he wrote he lost someone. So as I was sending a message to say, you know, Sorry, may, her so, may his soul rest in peace. As I was sending it, I thought of my friend. I, I lost a friend two years ago. Her name was Roger or Bumi. So as I was, as I was sending that message, Bumi popped in. And then I, I, I typed, may her soul rest in peace He's to a peace. picture of, of a, a guy, man. Guy. Yeah. That's how the brain works. Yeah. So now when I go on air, they give me this paper, okay? I go through, that's part of preparations. I, I, I look at my notes, I go through it. Now, if you come to me now and say, uh, Chisum, uh, Moses isn't going to be your analyst anymore. So cancel out Moses' name and put yeah, Biola. Yeah. Now, the thing about life presentation is that every human being misses a beat every now and again. Yeah, cool. So when you miss that beat, this paper is there to help you because you look down the first thing that the, you grab this first word in mm -hmm. yeah, I was gonna, chain of thought again. Let, let, let me follow, okay? let me follow yeah. on that. It so. gives you your chain of thought again. Mm -hmm. So if I come here now and I forgot at the time to cancel out Moses' Moses's name and put Biola. You might call Biola Moses. I will call there. him Moses because yes. once I'm there, sometimes I don't remember. Let me, one thing let, I do. I let me follow you. There, one thing give, I me do. give me a bit. Let me follow on that as well because I remember when we were on high TV. I'm a huge Arsenal fan. I can talk Arsenal without having them on paper. But you know what I used to do? Arsenal is playing Manchester United. There is no sports analyst or presenter who follows football that needs a prompt. Yes. But you know what I would do? I would write Arsenal, Manchester United. I would draw the football field. Yes, you, I'll, you remember? Mm. I write in caps. Yeah. <laughs> I write the goalkeeper. Mm, the I put his number. Yeah, draw the center circle. Draw the center circle. <laughs> Striker, the position. And I'll have it in front of me. You know why? Because as you're talking, like you said, you could forget. So you, you, could you have can forget Terry or Ray. No. Because, let me tell you yeah. the funny thing. So you just me 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 last let me night. Who did I forget last let night? Let me tell you something. Memory lapses. Last night. Yeah. Memory lapses. Memory lapses. Memory lapses. This guy. Um, <laughs> Kilo look of a boy. You know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Let me tell you what I do. Boy, yeah. that was, and I was, if just, I, if I'm I was at Libin. Yes, you know, you had to. Until they gave me the name. If I'm the one presenting this thing, I've known you guys since forever. I'll write all your names. Absolutely. Yes. I'll write his. I've, I've been, I've been, shoot. I forgot, you know, I was in a radio show. And I looked at Bode, who had been presented with for, for years. For years. to mention his name and, and he disappeared. Yes. disappeared. So anybody with me, I write Biola. Yes. I write it yeah. down. You see, some people have this propensity to be overconfident. Yeah. I feel I don't want to write anything. Yeah. Honestly. No, no, no. This paper, your yeah. biro, it's, it's your biggest, it never biggest go wrong. tool. It can never go wrong. And it doesn't mean it doesn't mean you are not smart. No. You are just guarding against what is a natural human feeling, which memory is that every no, you can no, have a memory I that conversation. Memory I started because I'm hoping that young people will watch it today or whenever and, and they watch it. And get something. And get something. Because People, we talk about preparation, preparation, preparation. Oh my goodness. IQ, I watch Biola, you can talk about Man U in your sleep. I can yeah. talk about Arsenal in mm. my sleep. I can talk about Rangers in my sleep. But the thing is, if you do not prepare, yeah. it's because I keep telling people, you see the camera, this tool here, is like a spirit. That is why when you're in front of a camera, you freeze. You, freeze. you ask yourself why. People freeze. I can tell you so why. For me, <laughs> for me, my own explanation is that this thing is like a... It's like a, a, a football. For me, football is like a beautiful woman. Because even a, a person who doesn't like football, once you see that football, you must touch it. Yep. I don't know why. Yeah. So it's like a beautiful woman. It's a spirit. The same with the camera. It's a spirit. So when you prepare, because this thing helps, what it just does for you is to help you get back your your chain of thought. Mm. Yeah. But people who don't prepare, that arrogance, that's Shows. what I see with a, lo a lot mm. of younger people. Yeah. Yes. I see people who come to the show and then we're there, Moses is preparing, I'm writing my own, Ralph is doing his OJ, and then this guest Doesn't, has done nothing. Yeah, nothing. nothing That's yeah. why they make mistakes. That's why they freeze yeah. on air. Let me you tell you why you freeze on air. It's, it's very simple. This I have found out over time. We used to have this guy who, if you sit with him and talk, my word, he is solid in his delivery. Not a sports person, but he loves sports. And he was pushing my boss, like, put me on air, put me on air, put me on air. How is he I know story? the person. You go, no, we all have those stories. <laughs> I know the person. They, so, the fine. Froze. My boss gave him, they put him on air. Yep. You understand? 
and yeah. he froze on air. Yeah. Mm. And he didn't come back. He ne- that was the last time he, he ever called. He never he disturbed anybody. My best friend. He came back. Frozen. I'm not sure he came. He came back. You know what? Is that your camera look like? Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why that is. It's simple. It's a very simple phenomenon. See that camera is inanimate. It's yeah. just there. It doesn't care about you. Yeah. It's just there to capture what you have to say. If you're talking to somebody, I'm looking at you. I'm, your non-verbal cues are mm. telling me something. So when I say something and you shake your head, I'm like, yeah, he's agreeing with me. Yeah. Mm. You know, it gingers me again. Put out. You do that to that camera. It doesn't know anything. It's, it's not it. feeling but, you. But, but, but off you, I'm but, getting but, vibes. But, but off Moses, you. but Moses, these same people, again, that, that was one thing I did as well when I was learning. And, and uh, but they mentioned it today is that, Oh, good day, G. Sorry. There you go. 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 So what I did was, uh, when I started presenting again, I, I would go back to my house and then I'd stay. Initially, I, I, before I started doing it in front of the mirror, I'd just sit on my bed and then i start oh, to delivering talk lines, yeah. delivering my lines and my, trying to get the right inflections and, and stuff like that. Again, what I can tell you now is that people would do that with a camera when they are on their own mm. and they flow. Mm. But once you say... No, that's practice. Yeah. And but once, you, once the person comes up and you say... Live. Q. Mm. Couple yeah, of reasons, no, no, no. though. Yeah. Yeah. Bright lights. Yeah. All those things. Different. Bright the, lights. The environment is different. Everything. Yeah. Everything. When, you're in your when you know you're in the moment. When you're in your home. Yeah. 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 Saying, it's your yeah. home. Everything it's a safe yeah. place. Yeah. Everything we're saying comes to preparation. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. That's you don't it. Don't take that. For instance, for the radio show we've been doing for almost 20 years, my scripts, before I go on air, I rehearse those scripts at least five times. Yeah. You're talking about that. Even till now. Till Even tomorrow. Till now. Yeah. I do 15 you, minutes uh, of spot on radio. Mm. I have, it's now that I've, ah. gone, I've gone digital. So yeah. Yeah. Where, 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 where we're on, we're on ITV. Mm. Mm. So Temisa is the presenter. I'm the analyst. He's the one who's going to talk I'm more. I'm the one who's going yeah. to talk more. My I come pass. into the studio. Yeah. Temisa has a full stash. Line so the first, like when they paid me my first money, the first thing I went to go and do was to buy a multi-linked model. <laughs> then when I used to come with my own notes, yes. <laughs> Temisa knew that yeah, this, <laughs> this <laughs> nigga is ready. On our, on our because show, you know why. Show, on our radio show, the two had three minutes. Yes. For European football. Did, but you had, would call out four sheets of paper, like about 10, 12 sheets yes. of paper. Yes. No, but was it not what we started with when you I said, were. look here, for a 15 minute show, a 10 minute show, you said, the preparation, on Friday night. preparation yeah. is you ridiculous. You on Friday night. While in for South Africa night, doing show. Games you don't watch that you have to analyze, you are going to read like eight match eight reports match for report. you to have a balanced view. Be then you go and watch the highlights on it so that you can get the proper For the first time in my life, I watched an AFCON tournament from game one, one analysis the end, yes, to, to the, the end. end. Why? Because I was not just presenting it, but I was doing a particular magazine show. show. Magazine mm. show called um, What's it called again? Master 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 Plan. And you have to ask intelligent is, questions. Is just asking, you need to unbreak to break a game yeah. down. Yeah. You need to break a game yeah. down. How did you break down a game you didn't watch? When I was celebrating 18 years of my broadcast uh, journey, I told a few of the people up in SA, uh, Sean Bartlett, uh, Stiga. TK and all of them, you know, just send me a te- one minute video, you know, that stuff. And one of the things Sean Butler said was he was very surprised at the, my knowledge of the game. And I'm thinking, mm-hmm. okay, because everybody was like, what is this guy coming to do? What has he got to deliver? Yeah. But they don't realize that I know they sleep. Oh. Yeah. Where are the analyzer? I'm, 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 I'm my notes. In. No, yeah. I, I think some people, some people get to a point where it goes to the. Um, Arrogance based on ignorance. ignorance yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we'll get to the point where they feel. I've arrived. I've arrived. I've arrived. I really I was, don't need I to go the house. extra mile. I, mean, I really don't need to go the extra And you know that is why when you have ex-footballers on a football set, <laughs> when I'll have Biola Kazim <laughs> as my analyst. 2006 World Cup. Remember, and Temisa oh, is anchor. Lord. And I'll have... We had uh, what was that one? The one that yeah. became crazy. Emeka is a... No, no. Yeah. Is a, what's the other one? Yeah. Izogu. Izogu. Yeah. Now, I remember I even, I even had to tell him because at halftime, I would ask a technical question. Which it would be Biola that would answer it. Yeah. Emeka would not answer it. Like a because they come in thinking, I play, I play football I now. I can analyze every anything. scenario. And, 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 and I just have to say anything and people will Yes. Anything. So eventually, you know what I had to do with these guys? I will now ask 
they jump out to him, but they to know and them. I will not ask them the technical questions. Yeah. And I ask this guy, so when you were playing, what did the manager to tell you in the <laughs> question room? Because they could not you, answer you, your they, technical you questions. Got it, I did the same thing, and I think it's the strength of a presenter. Yeah. You understand? You have to know, have to know what is the strength of your analyst. Yeah. Yeah. I had to I had teach Etim. Analyst. That's why Etim was getting yeah. better. I had to tell Etim, see, eh, at half time, yeah. as in the watch, tell me why Ashley Cole, they beat this man. So what else? What are we doing? Somebody to go. Now somebody to Unduka Obade too was a good. Unduka was another great learner. Unduka will ask you. I'll tell you what. My first match on ITV it was me, Stemisa, and Uncle Deju. I remember very well. And a nice little reunion. After the pre-match analysis, I went to sit down in the lounge mm. to start to watch. The next thing I saw was Uncle Deji brought out the sheet of paper and was writing, writing. down literally almost everything. everything I, was you working. might not remember. Mm. Immediately, I ran into the studio. So I was watching the game and I was literally documenting moments. What's what's happened? Happened? Moments, yes. yeah. When man, you are building from yeah. three at the back. Why is what this what happened? So by the time you get on air, because you are writing these things down, you can't pour it out. I was just going to ask, as we look to wrap up, is there a broadcaster you look at, you know, in the sports industry or wherever. Now and, again, and now today? May, not, not today, I mean, before I'm, or even present time. Yeah. And you think, I like that guy's career, I like that, you know, lady's career, I want to have that. Is there anybody? Not for me. No, I, no well, yeah. I also don't have that. But there are people you, maybe like what you mean to say is, I mean, we, we admire people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because at this point in time, uh, there are some people that I admire. I, John Dyke is one of them. Oh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I think I, I like that. In 1997, I had a stint, a two-week was it two weeks or two months? I can't remember. At the BBC, and I worked on Football Focus was a preview show, and that was uh, Gary Lineker was a presenter. And uh, but you know one thing I discovered: I was doing my show at DBN, and I was a producer, presenter, I was everything. Everything. Yeah. And Gary Lineker, Football Focus, thirty minutes show. He had a seventeen-man crew yeah, working with him. But I just like the fact that because he was a footballer, he had this extra insight oh, in yeah, asking yeah. questions. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. ex-footballers yeah. who can make the transition they have some very good insights. Yes. Yeah. So most of the time, they don't make that transition. You find out that most of the time you have regular presenters do. But when you have ex-sportsmen doing presentations who have made that crossover, not many, many not many, yeah, not many. That's the point, not many. But those of them that managed it, they, they tend to be very, very good. So I had a lot of admiration for Gary Lineker for that period I was at the BBC. But really, generally, you just like the ones you like. For me, and then you I'd, learn like from to, everybody. I'd like to give a lot of credit to Carol Shabalala because not only is she a, a, a good presenter, but I think Carol has also been able to completely, completely brand herself. Yeah, well, that's, that's ha what yeah. I can give her. She's she her has her. branded herself because she's looked at the industry. And I think Carol also realized the power that she had because in South Africa, they have a lot more women doing it and doing it very well. Yeah. But you notice that Carol, and again, I remember a few years ago, Colin said to uh, one of the presenters and says, you need to go get yourself an agent. Okay, because that's the next level mm. for you. And I think Carol realized that very early as well, because I've watched her go, I've watched her go to places that even men yeah. have found difficult to go. And it's not because she's a woman, yeah. it's because yeah. she has been deliberate yeah, with her yeah. growth, and her development. I've watched her do that. I've watched her uh, go, you know, take on challenges that most people would be afraid to take on. Mm -hmm. she, has, she has failed in a few, and she has taken those failures Lesson, learnings, yeah. and learned the lessons. Right. So I have to give her the credit, because when, it, when you talk about a woman in a very difficult terrain that right. is sports in Africa, yeah. who's been able to keep herself relevant yeah. and maintain a strong brand, that's Carol. Shepard. I mean, I, I would say naturally that. I mean, and it's not because Uncle Deji is here, but b watching him, Deji Tinubu, Fela Bankolemo, Shola, when we were starting, you know, you start to consume life sport as football. Yes. Then you start to thirst for the analysis, yeah. for yeah. the technical. When we, when we were growing up and we are of the age where we started taking interest in analyzing the sport, they were the ones, were the ones that we could watch. See. And yeah. he said something, they were the ones who could connect you because you could see by how they dressed and the things that they said that they were guys who easily could be working in banks. Yep. We did not know. But eventually we found out that most of you guys were in banks and yep, oil companies. Yep, yep. It's shown yep. true in the analysis because yep. we're young boys, we're in secondary schools, yep. and naturally your career trajectory will be finished, go to university and get a job. So we could connect 
in some way with that. And I can say that for a whole generation of us, that was the starting point of where, look, I mean, I'm not going to work in a bank. I'm going to be on TV. Yeah. And I'm going to eventually yeah. analyze yeah. and, and like talk to this sport. i yeah. very quickly as well. Now, I didn't start watching Temisan early because I was this very young girl in Enugu and we didn't see a lot. But I think, honestly speaking, the first time I saw Temisa was on high TV. Yeah, high TV was Yeah, I hadn't oh, seen... Oh, I see you on LTV. I see you on LTV. I used to watch you on LTV at night. Yeah. Basketball show. No, no, oh, I watched, yeah. 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 We were, we were, I mean, when I saw you, when I saw you presenting football, I was no. shocked. Oh, because I basketball was like your thing. You saw me on Clapper Podcast? Yes. <laughs> no, I didn't. I had when, I saw you, when I saw you presenting football, I was shocked. No, 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 I saw you on DBN. I saw you on DBN. I saw Charles on DBN. I didn't live in Lagos. I saw Charles on NTN. Yeah, I saw Charles on DBN. I didn't live in Lagos, so I didn't get to see a lot of that. But the one thing I'd say about Temisan, and again, that thing I liked about you is also what I like about my very good friend, uh, Ibuka. I liked, uh, the f and it helped me a bit. I liked the fact that Temisan just presents. Yeah, just talks. He just presents. He just talks. Have a conversation. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't want to sound no. funny. He doesn't He's, want. To he doesn't no. want and then, I, I, I said to a lot of young people yeah. that look, if you want, if you are a proper young analyst, yeah. if you know football yeah. and you can analyze, like the best, yeah. the best presenter you can have on air is Temisa. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to, I'm going to be asking. He's going to be asking you questions that really make you shine. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, for me, it wasn't, even, it wasn't even the questions. For me, it was. Yeah. For me, it was. No, take your turn now. Yeah. <laughs> for me, it wasn't the questions. For me, it was. The, vibe. the style. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that, like that what? conversational style, which is why I love Neil Andrews as well. Mm. I love Neil I love Andrews. I, it's just make, relax. Make the person relax. Will relax. Yeah. Make yeah. the person yeah. comfortable. Yeah. Ebu, yeah. Ebu, Ebuka is like that as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. Not trying, they're not trying to. Ebuka is having fun. Ebuka is just talking. Yeah. Yeah. Just having fun. The listener or the mm -hmm. viewer. Mm -hmm. No accent. The first time I saw Moses Prince, I was like, this guy should be in entertainment. Tall, good looking, you know? He's like, so there was a time Charles asked me to do some assessment. I mean, you get about presenters and all that. I was like, I asked Charles, this gentleman, you the Tola was your schoolmate, Tola yeah. Badikale. Yeah. I've seen him with Tola and all that. He said, I said, the guy looks to me like an entertainment presenter. He's not bad, but he looks to me like, but you know what? Like your drunk person said, mm. you just. Yeah. But you know what? Yeah. So I, I took the time. Yeah. I took the time to watch, and I was like, you know, the transformation from, because it appeared to me at first like somebody who could present anything. If you give him news, if you give him, so it was a big general. Yeah. I was particular about he has to be a sports yeah. person. That was my criticism. Yeah. But you know what? In a short space of time, we were the same thing that happened with Charles and myself at DBN. In a short space of time, it's like you, it's like you own, yeah. you own it and you go into it. Yeah. Because some of us were, when I started at DBN, they wanted to make me manager news. I threatened to resign yeah. because I, my own interest was sports. sports. I didn't want any other thing, you know, because I'd left a lucrative job. So if you're not going to give me what I want, I let me back. just go back, you know. So, and uh, Chisholm, I met Chisholm. I met Chisholm at one yeah. event at the this place where they play five side soccer on the island. Maybe she don't front of. I am sure she doesn't remember. It was I think we were the ones having something. I think it was a BRF thing that we had one time. And I was I'd seen her on air a few times and I was like, we just greeted her. I, was, I don't assume people know me. I don't I do that professionally. I don't assume anybody knows me. So I greet people with the feeling that you don't know me. If you know me, I'm fine. You know? So I knew she was at Arsenal. I wanted to make fun of her, but we hadn't met, so I just left her. She was at Arsenal buff. Because I'd seen, there's some people, by the time they say one or two things, you know the club, there's some people support. She's always like that. But you know, I've always wanted, you know there was a time we tried to do the high TV. I've always wanted a place where, a situation where women got into this space. Because there's a certain air they bring. There's a certain interest they bring. When guys are watching, and when guys see a female, who knows no, sports? sports. It's, like it's, it's can't you? They, they tend to yeah. listen more. Yeah. You know, so I'm the, there. A I few see times, our mm. chauvinistic nature in Nigeria. They tend to want to see. I'm sure she doesn't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so when they now, when they now realize, know. realize that she knows, they now realize that they now become their biggest fan. Exactly. You, you because they now get embarrassed. You now get my point. No, she said you. Yes, I do. I got it. And then. You know, what I think, because I, I honestly feel that we don't have enough women oh, definitely. in this sports yeah. space. I so honestly, that's, my, that's still my yeah. belief. We don't have enough. So 
People like her. No, pretty women as well. Yeah. <laughs> people like her. No, pretty women as well. People pretty. like her are like, uh, you know, inspire yes. yeah, others to know yeah, that yeah. Yeah. we can do this because yeah. there's a tendency to believe ah, it's not a terrain for, for a young women. woman. Yeah. Right. It's not a terrain, so so that you don't discourage uh, young women who want to do that. So. It's and we have to say the generation after her, yeah. you can see the numbers are growing. You can see the numbers are growing. Yeah, you can see the numbers. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and we've got what, two, three questions to squeeze in before we leave. Um, if you could really sit down with somebody and have an interview one on one with them, not just sports, anybody, you know, presidents of countries, they're they're alive. Alive. then and alive, who would it be? Just one word. Oprah for me. Oprah. Oprah for hey. me. Mine, mine would have been Oprah. Nelson Mandela. Right. That's a good what one. Would it be for you? That's a good one. I never really thought about this. Yeah. Never crossed my mind. <laughs> yeah. It's a tough question, right? Yeah. And Oprah is going to happen. And now, now, the one person, like if I got, if I have to pay to go and interview that mm. person, is Khabib, UFC. Oh. No Maga, no Maga, no Do you find I him want... interesting though? He's a, he's a fantastic fighter. We, we don't need to go into this. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I like, what I like about him is that I see someone who has a lot of love for family. Oh yeah. A lot of love for, for religion, country. A lot of love for country, and very little, not very little, but. He's a, a little bit aloof about his sport that he's yeah. damn. And I, 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 I like the fact that he also operates yeah. by tr like time tested codes. Yes, but yeah. oh, no. yes. Oh, no. your yeah. word. Yes. Like, but you see the problem. Now I know who I'd like to interview. You will struggle with that interview. Yeah. yeah. Because again, he's media shy. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, like, that's, 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 that's a no, challenge for me. That's a challenge for me. I want to get him. guys at once. They can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Dead or alive. One person I'd like to interview right now, pay good money for. I'll give my left hand for his the notorious B.I.G. Mm, right. I'm a huge, yeah, you are. massive fan of rap. Music. Every time you're doing a traffic thing, he's always the Massive B. fan of always rap. And I do B. and I do on classic Saturday. Saturday I mean, as part, part of my audition with Demi, so in the car I was when I'll be analyzing and he, he me. To, and he says he wants to listen to Notorious B.I.G. Just to get him on side. Not, I'll start rapping Notorious B.I.G. Like, yes. Just put me on there, man. I can rap B.I.G. I love B.I.G. Dead Nelson Mandela. Dead living alive. for me, living for Notorious me. Notorious B.I.G. Uh, living for me, Patrick Obama. And I said, did I come Barack Obama. Yeah, no Barack. problem, Barack. It's okay. Barack. Right, it's right, it's right. Barack, it's right. Barack <laughs> Obama. You didn't write that. You didn't write that. I don't know. It, it's a life. Call. What about you? It, it I mean, I haven't thought cool. about the deep thing, but I mean, I find Jose Mourinho eternally of interesting. Of course, I know you do. Always see. interesting. Arsene Wenger for he me. Always has, he always has perspectives. He I always like has words. He always describes things in a way that you would just know that this guy is infinitely intelligent, and I will always admire that. I think I'll be open to just anybody. And just the fact that Biola brought up Jose Mario, it just, it, it kind of, it, it pricked my interest. And I think, yeah, maybe somebody, because I find him very fascinating. No, you, you Jose Mario, though, I feel that you have to, uh, you can get a lot of insights from him. So you two, you have to be as prepared. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You have to be cool. Absolutely. He's so, he's so deep. It's so intelligent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would have loved to say Alex Wenger, but I hardly hear what he said. He what he says. You meet a lot of interesting people um, across the globe. Who's the most interesting person you've met? I go with you since you didn't have the last one. It has to be the drunk guy that gave me the best compliments. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. On it that has one. to be him. Yeah. You know, because I mean, just look, too bad he can't remember his name. I, I, dude, I, he's a stranger. Yeah. Yeah. Saw me on the, saw me. You understand? He did. Yeah, I've heard so many people say, "Ah, oh, good job, good job." But you know. The fact that, look, this guy was walking away and he's been yelling my name. I should like to tell you why he connected. Tell because me. you knew deep in your mind that he was saying was the truth. Right. It is it the, truth. Yeah. Yeah. the truth. I you knew how I started. Yeah. You know? yeah. And the fact that he came back and was still yelling, the fact, I was even hoping they would bounce him and not let him come to the air. <laughs> but apparently, yeah. he's a, he's a he patron. Yeah, he's yeah. A patron. Yeah. They let him come through there and, you know... Most interesting. By the way, when you said this space, you need to put... The space with you, you, you need to do this. <laughs> you know, so it Most has to be that... I have met good drunkard. On this job, Jimmy Odumusu. It's one man that till he, I die and he dies, I will never forget him. And I, I remember telling him once, I think it was a high TV, that the day I hear that you set up anything broadcasting, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter where I am, I'm coming, I'm coming to, to join you. Yeah, right. 
Love the man. Love him. So I met quite a number of people, luckily. Um, I mean, I've, I've met Roy Keane, I met Sir Bobby Charlton, I nearly froze. And <laughs> when I was going to take a picture with him, the dude who I gave my phone in Manchester to take a picture was really messing up. And I snapped at him, take the picture! <laughs> because the old man really wanted to go. His wife was, you know, going to take, you know, going to take him away. But the most interesting, not necessarily the most interesting person, but the, mon the most interesting way I've ever met anyone was in Amsterdam. I was flying to London. We we're, were, were laying over in um, Amsterdam. And my phone had gone off. And um, you realize that in Holland, you can't charge like with your normal charger. So I was looking around because I needed to, you know, charge my phone and pick up some messages. Yeah. And there was a dude wearing a suit. And I could see that he had the type of charger. And, you know, I just tapped him up and said, sir, please, can I just charge my phone for 10 minutes? And this person turns and looked at me. It was Mark Overmas. No way. <laughs> Mark Overmas. No I, way. I, I, I didn't let him go till we got on the plane. <laughs> I just kept talking and talking. And it was really... You know, Opun, mm -hmm. he was director of football at Ajax. You know, going to you know, to go as scout player. Me, you know, I met <laughs> Efan Koku at English, that FA, that, you know, that... In, in fact, Chelsea was, end of the season, Chelsea were playing Wigan, if okay. I remember. Angelotti. Ah, you, you went to London for Yes. That, yeah. So I was sitting down, and you know, it was my first time not traveling, but traveling for work. Yeah. And I'm inside the Chelsea media room, and I was the only black dude there. So I didn't want to seem like I was a fish out of water. So I was feeling very, I was trying to perform aloof. But I was using the, the peripheral vision to look at, my goodness. Oh, boy. And I'm saying, oh, see who I read about. Yeah. So I'm, I'm still forming. Mm. Now, Efan sits by me. I just glance at him. And I look, I didn't know there was Efan. Mm. But the, the face is, you know, you know, but yeah, I'm, I'm just overawed, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm just overawed by my surroundings. I'm seeing Ashley Cole's, that time I was married to, what's her name? Cheryl Cole. Yeah. yeah, she comes in with the baby, hey! And what killed me was all the journalists their relationship with the footballers, the ex, and because Master Desai comes yeah. in, it wasn't like I saw in Nigeria. Yeah. They were not fawning over these footballers. Exactly. They were not fawning. Hey, Marcel, yeah, like I was saying, you know. Mm. So I was over. So Efan is sitting by my side. Now here's the thing. I think he knows. I think I wasn't masking it as much as I thought I was masking yeah. it, because I was just stiff. But I was pretending as if nah, nah, I'm used to this. I lie, yo. So Efan starts saying, "So where are you from? You must. I'm the only black guy there now yeah. in the media trip." I said, I said, Nigeria, I said, ah, yeah, Nigeria, he loves, he loves him. So I asked, I'm not looking at him. I just, I just glanced. Oh, you were born in Nigeria? I said, yeah, yeah, I've been to Nigeria a couple of times. Mm -hmm. What company do you work for? I said, IT. He said, ah, Twain's my friend. So we have massive, I said, what do you do? He said, I work with the Premier League as well. I, look, it's just, the, I, look, I'm having a conversation <laughs> with yeah, a fan. Yeah. So I go to, so he says, he's so in I said, yes, yeah, coming in a couple of days from now. So when you tell him, so I didn't even bother asking him, his name. His name. I just wanted him to go. So later, match is over. We've inter interviewed. I'm in my bedroom in the hotel. I swear to God. <laughs> it just came. Bam! That was I just dropped up. <laughs> my God! <laughs> you know, that <laughs> time, <laughs> I, I covered Premier League for like four years for what? High TV. Traveled a lot. So yeah, yeah. You know, met all these people. I always tried to do something. I was there for a job. Yeah. And I wasn't going to fawn over these guys yeah. because yeah. I was there for a job. Andy Gray was the biggest yeah, analyst at that time big, and all yeah. of that. I met this old commentator, um, Martin Tyler. Martin Tyler oh, brilliant. And he was so brilliant. nice, was so nice. warm, brilliant. so yeah. helpful, so, so, you know, so I respectful, you, you, you know, fantastic. so you, fantastic guy. You, you, he made, he take he really made interesting you really interesting. Nigeria. Yeah. You know? Oh, what part yes. of Nigeria? Yes. Exactly. We really had a long, a long conversation and all of that. But the most interesting person I met then was the Liverpool manager then. The Rafa Spaniard. No. Oh. Rafa Benitez. My first match was the 4 1 at Old Trafford. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> when they whitewashed United. Yeah. And after the. United won the title that year. No? Yeah, I know. You know. Right? <laughs> so they remind me. But that match was not. Right. It wasn't funny. Right. Uh, as a Man U fan, but I was a journalist. You couldn't show that. <laughs> you know? So, but, you know, one thing I realized is that in this job, I always tell people this job opens up the world. Oh yes, it does. You meet yeah. all kinds of people. It does. It really you meet, does. You meet. You can dine with kings today. Absolutely. I can be hanging out with his friends and going out tomorrow. Absolutely. You know. You you mix. Absolutely. You meet all sorts. So you have to have the humility to mix with the people down here, and, and also the, the self respect and the confidence to meet with the people. Yeah. Absolutely. Up there. Yeah. Absolutely. You have to yeah. be flexible. For me, I think. Uh, I met and interviewed Oscar Pistorius, well, well, uh, oh, London 20, after. Before, after. before London 2012, yeah. the first time he ran with able bodies or, yeah, the Blade Runner. And then I met uh, Alison Felix, um, 
I no. love yeah. that girl. I interviewed her and I was just grinning. <laughs> You're fine. I'm telling We're you. You're fine. I know. But I think the most interesting place I ran into someone was same London 2012. I was working, so I got on a train to go to one of the venues, and then I turned. Who did I see? Your Laurent Blanc with his oh, wife. All right. <laughs> like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so the wife said, "Do you want a picture?" Yeah. yeah. I said, "Oh yeah," and then she took a picture. But again, the last one. This one, I think, I'm never starstruck. Mm. I'm hardly I'm ever. I'm, never I'm too, hardly ever yeah. starstruck. But this, yeah. once, yeah. this but this one, one time, I was. I don't know if if I was starstruck. I froze when I saw Sabo Village though. people, <laughs> village, village people, people follow. Yeah, yeah. but uh, you know uh, Michael Johnson. Yes. yes, he has a reputation of being. It's not it's difficult. Not yes, 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 terrible yes, does. person. Yes. Has that reputation. So everybody had been saying it at the events. This guy, you better stay away from him. Blah blah blah, and then. So I walk into uh, the hotel lobby, not my hotel. I went to do an interview. And then I saw him. And then he looked at me. I swear this guy smiled at me, but obviously he <laughs> it did was not. Just, it was just him. <laughs> I saw he laughed. He smiled at me. That's what I saw. Yeah. So I'm like, ah, Michael. And then I hugged him. And then he hugged me. Then he came out. Do I know you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't matter anymore. Does <laughs> it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, no, you don't. <laughs> you want he started laughing. You know, yeah. 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 Anybody, <laughs> anybody ever met you, Symbols? No. I did. No. Fantastic guy. I, 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 I met, met him at Old Trafford. Oh, I Fantastic guy. Yeah. 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 But there's a guy I met on a flight, met Tyson Gay. Ah, the sprinter. Yeah. And we, we, we sat together and we had such a huge Fantastic guy. Very, very easy Funny thing was, they did not Oh, see? You know the crazy thing about it? <laughs> I used to go to Fela's house. Okay. When Fela was alive, I used to go to Shrine. I used to go to Kalakuta Kingdom. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, no, I met Fela. Fela was no, I accessible. Mean, I never met Dede. Yeah. I met Femi. I, I, every, I met everybody in and around Afrobeats. Yeah. I, I rolled with them, took the herb with them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know? And I meet Dede. And I'm just that struck. Yeah. I do not know why. Everybody is basically talking about all the people they met. I've met some people like that. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm the only one who, the, the, my only interested person is a drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and is that a sign of what you say? I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm not even going to love it. That's what 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 that's no, my younger <laughs> self, my younger self, my only regret is I started this job five, seven years late. That's what I should have done since straight out of school. So right. I still, two years, I mm. did this and then I went to work and all of that. And I think it was a mistake. I think I actually lost like six, seven years right. of a career. Right. So I would, uh, I would tell my younger self to, I, I think, well, I'm kind of agreeing with what DJ said. Uh, I would have said, you know what, um, speed up what you had to do because there were a lot of moments of, Non clarity. I wasn't mm. sure what I yeah. wanted to do. I wasn't sure what I was going to get out of it. I'll actually tell you something. Eventually, you did find purpose. There you go. Most people actually never really do. You know, that's what I said. When my brother told me, look, if you don't do this thing, you might really regret it later in life. And that's when I took that My younger self, frankly, I think I would have learned to be a bit more kissers, frankly. Yeah. I would have learned to be a bit more kissers because. For me, kissers when I was much younger was being patient. Right. So now that I am old, I remember I realized that it might not necessarily become kissing us. Just yeah. be a bit more patient. Yeah. Yeah. So I think if I tell my younger self, just be a bit more patient. Yeah. That's what that would be. Viola. I mean, I don't know. I think. I mean, I won't say I'm living my dream. I mean, well, I wish I had you're living more, it. I wish I had far more money. You're relatively young <laughs> as well. I, I wish I had far more money, but I mean, I probably would. I probably would. Probably, you know. I wish they missed listen to me much earlier, though. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have people through auditions for months, but I mean, I probably yeah. would say, in, because in many ways, I actually count myself very lucky. Yes. In many, many ways. I think I've, so had, as well. I've done, I've done a lot of the stuff that I, you know, I want to do, and now I'm going in a new direction. So in, in many ways, I probably would tell my younger self to just, um, well, I've done the same thing, maybe mm -hmm. in a... Yeah, exactly, maybe in a bet. Oh, and the mistakes actually bring you to the yeah. destination. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't go to university until I was 22 because yeah. I, all I wanted to do was to go to the UK. And they kept refusing me visas. And then I went to an interview with my sister. They gave my sister, they didn't give me. And mentally, I just took that as a cue to say, look, these guys don't want me around yeah. the UK. And that's let's, let's push on. And I went to go and jam, buy my jam form. Attended jam lesson at the grand old age of 21. Wrote my jam, <laughs> make sure I got a very high score. And when I was filling my jam form, my uncle was telling me, oh, choose in the lag. I'm like, no, 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 no. no. I'm from Ogun State. I'm going to choose. All I'll be seeing about your university. So that they are cut off mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I've always had that about.
for me? For me, I'd say uh, to my younger self, especially uh, during the early days, just enjoy it. Yeah. Just enjoy it because don't worry too much. Don't worry too much. Too much. Just, yeah, worry a lot just enjoy it. Uh, enjoy the process because it's a process, and it will continue being a process long after Until you die. Uh, uh, Okudeji's age and older or whatever. Just, yeah. just, enjoy, just it. enjoy it. All yeah. the like we say in Igbo, all the tibo zobo. It's not necessary. Mm, yeah, yeah, the worry. This job, this job keeps you actually well. This job keeps you young. Yeah. Has it not played out the this way you, you, you all thought it would play out? The way you started no, out many not, years not ago? Not really. Not fully. Man, not fully. I never had a plan. Not I never, No, I never saw a future. For me, I was just mm. living by the, for the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I never said to myself, you like, just something, you know, when you're much younger, you have a plan. Or when I'm 21, I'll get here. When I'm 25, I'll have given. Yeah. But as soon as reality hits, yeah. I get, as, as, as it does for everybody, for in everybody. Every as, yeah, as I got the first yeah. job, yeah. I never had a plan afterwards. Right. I was just for me, leaving. For me, all I know is that at the end of the day, for me, Chisom, okay, apart from being the first, uh, well, let me not say the first because there are other women ahead of me, but apart from being a sports minister someday, which is work in progress, for me, I still want to own that uh, success, big and successful. A TV network yeah. and a production company. So that's that's it for that's, me. That's a dream. Yeah. I, I, I would say, I, I think yeah. very importantly, this is a journey. Uh, I say to young people most times, you're too you're too in a hurry to get to the get destination. To the yes. Enjoy the process. Just Enjoy be the in the process. process. Yeah. And Enjoy I said, it. I said, I'm working process. I'm what was it, about 20 process. years working process. Yeah. I'm still working process. Work process. And I'm still enjoying that journey. Yeah. Yeah. The, so farther wherever, go, wherever, the, the farther you go, the more, more you realize yeah. that the journey is a it's, lifelong yeah. journey. Yeah. Yeah. Then it's and just chill a little. And, and, and I'm closer to 50 than 40. Yeah. Yeah. Then you get clarity don't think I'm in the there. journey. Yeah, absolutely. That's what you want. Clarity will come to you in the journey. Every time I look back, I'm always like, oh, okay, that was why all of this was. Absolutely. It does connect. Just a couple of Enjoy days it. ago, I was at home, I was looking for something, and I saw this stack of old photographs. And I started going through. So I started picking out photographs that were professional photographs. Mm. And I, I saw one. There was this interview I had, which was the best interview I had, but nobody knows about it. It was three brothers who represented Nigeria in cricket. Uh -huh. Chibogu brothers. It was 1995, I think it was a triangular cricket, Nigeria, Ghana, Gambia, in Lagos. Mm -hmm. And I saw that picture, I was like, oh, this was the life because that interview, a lot of people raved about it because these were three brothers of their father played cricket for Nigeria wow. and they played cricket. All of them are all of them are abroad now. So mm. for me, that was one of the highest points of my early career. That day, I felt like I love what I've, I've done. done it. Yeah. You know, I've done it. Mm. And seeing that picture, and I started going to, I saw pictures of myself with Yinka Craig, mm. Malam, Yusuf Jibo, all the things were done. Some of the pictures are high TV and all of that. So I just put everything together and I said, okay. I think I just have a career chronicle, Absolutely. which I'm going to put on Facebook. Or, <laughs> so have this picture to show your journey, to show my journey, journey. Yeah. you know, so that just enjoy. Yeah. There's yeah. lots enjoy of things it. to enjoy, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. in the yeah. process enjoy and document your process. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah. if this was not on ground, you would have forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's been really interesting, I must say. Yes. It's been an absolute pleasure to have um, each and every one of you. So thank you much for coming, yeah. and uh, so hopefully we we'll see you some other time. No, thank you. No, this was a long ass thing. No, fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.